Welcome back to the AI for Good Global Summit here in Geneva, where I'm joined now by Irakli Berizzi, who is the head of the Center for Artificial Intelligence and Robotics for the UN's Crime and Justice Department. Um, you know, in Western societies in particular, we're obsessed by security and being safe and feeling of insecurity. Um, so is your job looking at AI to make us safer or is it to make sure that our, our personal rights aren't infringed upon? All of it in together, uh, Chris. Thank you very much. First of all, it's an honor to be with you here and being interviewed. It's the third time I'm supporting the AI for Good Summit and, uh, and, and this wonderful undertaking. Now, uh, the mission of the center is to support UN member states in understanding how artificial inter uh, intelligence and robotics can be used for security purposes, for the crime prevention and criminal justice and to make our lives better, basically to extract the best out of this technology and to minimize the risks which are associated, associated to it. Go on, this is a provocative question. Could AI make us crime-free if we wanted to? Well, AI can certainly contribute to some of the, uh, some of the issues to make us, well, not entirely crime-free, obviously, because crime has existed since homo sapiens are around or, or even beyond, so therefore uh, a crime-free society, I don't know what it means, but, but certainly it can contribute in some of the aspects and some of the fighting crime issues as well. On the other hand, like everything, when there's a new innovation, there's always a bad side and criminals can use AI as well, right? Absolutely. And, uh, and you see, I mean, criminals can and are using AI already, mm -hmm. and once the AI becomes more and more sophisticated and more and more sort of complex, uh, it will be definitely used by criminals, or there will be definitely many avenues. Now look, there are three basically potential uh, ways how, or three uh, categories how criminals can use AI. One is digital crimes. So here we're talking about all the cyber crimes, but put on autonomous technology. So right now, most of the cyber crimes are conducted by human hackers who are uh, developing malicious codes. Mm -hmm. Now, in the future, we will have AI systems which will be developing that type of uh, codes who will not get tired, will not need food, will not need to be paid, and will self-learn how to do it, and will do it in much more complicated and complex way. So that's one category. The second one would be physical crimes. So we're talking about things like drones or ground robots who could be used for things like terrorist attacks, targeted assassinations, killings, contract killings, and so on and so forth. So you, you take a drone, you put on the autonomous te uh, technology, give it, uh, give it a task, and it will execute the task. It will identify the target, and it's a very dangerous thing. And the third, a third uh, category of uh, crime would be political crimes. And here we're talking about things like video manipulations. So you. Even with the current technology, and maybe you've seen some of the deepfake videos floating around on social medias, with the current technology, it is possible to uh, construct a video of you, which will look like you, sound like you, but would not be you, and will be saying things which you would want to, uh, not want to say. And that's a very dangerous thing. Um, you work a lot with Europol, I guess, and Interpol to make them aware of all this and also how to make their techniques more efficient? Yes, certainly. I mean, Interpol, we have a long-standing cooperation already. Starting from a couple of years ago, we started a movement called uh, Global Meetings on Risks and Opportunities of Artificial Intelligence and Robotics for the Law Enforcement. And last year, we conducted the first global summit in Singapore at the Innovation Center of uh, Interpol on this. So we had a lot of uh, uh, <clears throat> law enforcement agencies participating, private sector participating, academia and governments. This year, a month ago in New York at the UN headquarters, we had a large event briefing UN member states on these issues. And similarly, it was a multi-stakeholder uh, cooperation and participation. We had companies like Google there or, or NYPD and others participating and discussing these issues. And uh, 2nd and 4th of July in Singapore, we're doing a second global meeting during the Interpol world where we will have more than 50 or 60 uh, law enforcement agencies and countries participating in identifying the opportunities for the law enforcement, so what sort of AI applications they can use uh, and what are the risks and benefits related to that. I guess there's a lot of ethical concerns because, for example, I read the other day that um, with the algorithms of AI, if I'm a shop owner, I know 
pretty well through algorithms if someone coming to my store is going to rob me or not. Right. I mean, there are many different applications at the moment floating around. Some of them are uh, uh, can work, some of them don't work. And I think that what we would need to do is really understand where we're heading with that because they because they obviously uh, you know this technology is developing on a daily basis put it this way if not if not even faster therefore some of the applications are working well but be before we put into place we need to really make sure that this is not infringing people's uh, privacy rights people's uh, uh, freedom rights democracy and so on and so forth which is you've been accompanying this summit for the last three years uh, how important is security and justice as a topic as far as you're concerned? But look, uh, Secretary General of the United Nations on the last General Assembly in his opening statement identified two epochal challenges. One is a climate change and the other one is the disruption associated with the development or fast development of the technology. And he underlined the artificial intelligence, biotech and blockchain. Therefore, this is a major issue for the United Nations among two epochal challenges that what disruptions we will have, what sort of challenges and what kind of uh, problems this uh, development of the technology will, will focus. Therefore, I think this is definitely a primary issue for the UN and certainly for the, for the humanity as well and the summit. Iraq Liberty, very interesting stuff there. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Chris.